Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics. Uh, I've been doing a few in-store training things and club nights and those sorts of things lately and meeting lots of people out there which is cool, lots of, lots of guys that want to give soft plastics fishing a crack and also those that are fishing soft plastics but they're just, they're not quite cracking it in their area. So today I thought I'd give you 10 tips for fishing soft plastics, uh, taking into account those people that are maybe bait fishers and want to try soft plastics and also those that are fishing soft plastics but they're maybe not consistently catching. I've had a few tough sessions in the yak lately, uh, but I'm still managing to scratch together, you know, a few brim, a few flatties, a bit of a mixed bag of other species. So the fish have still got to feed and, and one species or another is still gonna feed. So there's a few things we can try to just try and improve our capture or to get, get ourselves into soft plastics successfully. So let's have a look. So firstly, in terms of linking soft plastics to bait, for the bait fish -o, <clears throat> I get asked a lot, do I need a sinker? And you don't need a sinker, that is your sinker. So your head weight on your jig head is your sinker, that is your hook, and this is your bait, same as if you're bait fishing. So it's just sinkers, hooks, and bait, the same as if you're bait fishing, but you just gotta think about it in terms of our sinker is fixed to our hook, but we still need to choose a hook that is appropriate to the species that we're targeting. And we also need to choose a hook that's appropriate to the bait that we're using. So that bait needs to be appropriate for the, the species that we're targeting. So just like with sinkers in your tackle box for bait fishing, you'll have a few different head weights in your kit of soft plastics, in your, in your jig head kit. You'll have a few different weights for that casting distance and also for that sink rate to get that plastic down where you want it to be. Hooks, you'll have a variety of hook sizes with those sinker weights because you need to have hooks to suit the different baits that you're going to use. From a, a little tiny fellow like this one, like a little grubs, to a, to a say a four inch center jerk shads and even bigger, right up to 17 inch center jerk shads and bigger. So, we've got our sinker, our hook, and we've got our bait. So in terms of bait, if I'm throwing a small pilly, white bait, that sort of thing. I'm gonna choose something like this if that's what my species are, uh, that I'm targeting are eating. If they're eating worms, I might throw a curl tail. If they're eating yabbies or prawns, I might throw a TRD crawls. So again, we're selecting a bait that's gonna work. We're selecting a hook that suits it and we're selecting a sinker, the head weight, that is gonna get that plastic where we want it to be. So just keep it simple. Start with, you know, a few, a few jig heads and a few plastics to suit the area that you're fishing and then you can gradually expand as you wanna explore deeper water, shallower water, fishing higher in the water column, fishing for different species. Matching the hatch is the second thing on my list. So if I'm fishing an area, I always keep an eye out for what's going on around me and I look at what the bait fish look like or whether there's crabs or whether there's yabby holes because I, I want to match the food that the fish are eating. So as we said, you know, that curly tail could be a worm, could be a little creature, a little prawn or shrimp skipping across the bottom. This guy could be a yabby or it could be a, a little cray in the fresh water. We've got our bait fish. So it's important to think about what the fish are eating and represent that, that bait as best you can. Also, sometimes you'll get a fish in the boat and it might cough up some different bait fish or some little crabs or some little yabbies and that sort of thing. And that'll help you select. Otherwise, also keep an eye out around you for what's going on there in terms of matching the hatch. <clears throat> Where do I start fishing? I still see a lot of people out there fishing in the areas that I fish, and they're fishing in the middle of nowhere. They're just on flat sand, or they're in mud bottom. The key thing, you wanna find structure. Structure holds bait, and structure holds fish. So, in your area, you'll look for primary structure. So, visible structure is your obvious starting point. So, mangrove edges, uh, weed beds and, and channel edges, man-made structure like pontoons, or boat ramps, or jetties, or rock walls, those sorts of things. So, that's the obvious structure. Then also keep an eye out as you're drifting along and as you're cruising the waterway for less obvious structure like rock bars that are under the water, channel edges, deeper depressions in the bottom on sandbanks, uh, weed, patchy weed beds, all of that secondary structure that's below the surface. Keep an eye out for that sort of stuff as well because structure is king when, you, when you're chasing fish a lot of the time. It provides the breaks in the current and it attracts the bait and that sort of thing. So keep an eye out for structure. Also keep an eye out for obvious bait working. If there's bait working in the area that you're fishing, you're more likely to catch fish. So often I'll fish a bank and there's no bait. Move to another bank with more bait on it, boom, you start catching fish. So structure, bait, and depending on the species as well, keep an eye out for birds. 
Birds are a good signal that there's fish or bait in the area as well. So structure bait and birds, I always keep an eye out for. Next on my list, I've got look and listen. So a lot of us go out fishing and it's relaxing and it's awesome and we could just cast away all day and be quite happy. But if you pay attention to what's going on around you, you can catch a lot more fish as well. So as I said before, look for what bait's in the area so we can, we can match the bait that's in the system. But also look for what's going on around you. I'll, I'll quite often, I'll be fishing with someone and I'll go, oh, did you see that? Bait flicking in the shallows there. Oh no, I didn't see it. Quick flick of plastic in there. Boom, fish on. The fish, are, the fish are chasing the bait in the shallows. Get your plastic in there. Boom, fish on. So look out for any sort of any sort of movement. I've, I'm fishing with a good mate, Sean, and I said to him, "Oh, look at that prawn, fl prawn flicking, prawn flicking there. There'll be a brim under that. Doom, flick the plastic in, nail by brim straight away. Quite often, if there's a prawn flicking on the surface, there'll be a fish underneath it chasing it. And also, listen. I'll be I'll be fishing, and I'll hear a bit of bait disturbance over to that side or a bit of bait disturbance over there. Pick up on that and, and get over there, get your lure in there as well. Just keep an ear out for what's going on, whether it be bait disturbance or whether it be fish actively feeding like boof, barra. Let's get over there and see if we can catch him. Slow your retrieves down. You know, soft plastics are soft and chewy. When I take guys out fishing, a lot of the time they will be fishing too quick, you know. This, this thing here, 10 times tough, Elastec, is super soft and flexible, it feels real. So often I'll roll a plastic across the flats just above the weedy bottom and I'll get bite, 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 hook set. And because the brim are biting it, but it feels real, so they just keep biting it until they get up there and they find that hook. So yeah, always just, if you're not catching on plastics, slow it down, slow it down again and, and just see if you can get, get, some, um, get some rattles. It, you know, it, at times I say to the guys, oi, what are you doing? Give them time to eat it. Stop ripping it or jerking it or winding it away from them. Slow it down, give the fish time to eat it. You know, at times you want a high speed retrieve depending on the species, but a lot of the time if you're not catching, just slow it down, slow it down, give the fish time to eat it and you'll be all good. Mix up the retrieves as well. Uh, you know, I'll go out there and I'll have a favorite retrieve or two that I'll use, but on some days I find I'm up on the flats and the fish want hop, hop, give it a wind, hop, hop, give it a wind. Sometimes they just want it slow rolled across the bottom. I'll hop it and twitch it around and I'll hardly get a rattle. I'll just go to a straight roll over the flats and I'll start catching brim, flat head, all that sort of thing. So I don't know, I don't know why, I don't understand. There's, you know, there's a lot of questions in fishing, but if you mix up your retrieve, you maximize your chances of finding what the fish want on the day. So we could call it cracking a pattern. Once you crack a pattern, you'll consistently catch on that particular day or that particular time of day or that particular session. But you've just got to nut out what the fish want. So do they want a slow roll? Do they want shake, a shaking retrieve? Do they want a hopping retrieve? What do the fish want on the day? So mix up that retrieve until you find what the fish want. And I always say to the guys as well, watch your line. I'll be fishing with people and they'll be doing a big hop, looking around, wow, beautiful day. Have a look at the birds over there. And as their line's sinking, I see their line go, and they've had a bite or they've had a fish on and then the fish has rejected the plastic. And I said to them, you just got a bite or you just had a fish on and they're like, what? How do you know? I said, I was watching your line. The fish has hit it on the sink. So pay attention to what your line's doing. So mix up those retrieves, but always try and stay in touch with the lure. You want it sinking freely, but you also want, you want that slack line tight enough that you can, you can see if there's any movement in the line, you can set the hook. So quite often I'll be hopping along a bank or I'll be hopping in deep water hop hop on the sink fish taps the line and i'll just wind it up and hit it you get got to set that hook because that fish has got it in its mouth potentially or it may have already spat it spat it back out again so yeah watch your line for signs that there's fish activity there's bites there's taps on your line all right color so i've spoken about color a lot and you'll probably go oh not color again but yeah, i've just pulled this kit out of my so here this is my kayak kit I've got a handful of plastics, a couple of trays of jig heads, some scent and that sort of thing in a dry bag, awesome for the yak. So in terms of colour, I've spoken about it a bunch of times, but I'll run through it again for those that may not have heard me talk colour. But I generally carry at least three different colours with me in my favourite plastics. I'll grab one of them out because that is a ripper for floodies. So I have light natural bait fish color in whatever plastics I'm carrying. 
The light natural bait, bait fish colour excels in clear water and bright conditions. It's a very, very natural presentation and it's a great starting point in those bright coloured conditions and that, that clear coloured water. If I get into dirty, murky, darker water, more tannin stained or just dirtier water in general, I will fish a darker coloured plastic. It provides a better silhouette, makes it easier for the fish to see it in the water. So dirty water, dark colour, or those early morning, late afternoon, low light as well. Or even night time, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the classic plastics are black for that night fishing. So that better silhouette in the, in the darker conditions. And then I always throw a couple of fluoros in the kit as well. That's just, you know, sometimes you just can't pick them. They, they, won't, eat a, they won't eat the natural colour, they won't eat the dark colour. Throw a fluoro at them, they're all over it. So fluoro is a, is a great option to have in your kit as well. So light, natural, dark and fluoro. And we're pretty well coloured, covered in terms of colour. Scent it up. If you're not catching, bang some scent on. I, I always say to people, well, I scent up all the time, regardless. Uh, I always say to people, look, if you don't believe in scent, and you're actively catching fish, it's fine. If the fish are active, they're gonna eat anyway. So if, you, if you're fishing and you think, oh, I don't need scent, I don't need scent. If you're not catching, squirt a bit of scent on and watch the difference. It can, it can get the fish to feed more aggressively. So they'll hang onto the, the plastic more aggressively. They'll hang onto it longer, which gives you more time to set the hook. And also I think you attract a lot more different species as well when you're fishing scent. So, even if you're fishing, you know, guys that fish tuna and those sorts of things where it's, it's fairly much a high speed or a high speed retrieve and a reaction type bite, sometimes they'll cast it and let it fall below the school. If you've got scent on there, I think you're more chance of attracting snapper and other species that are feeding in the area. So I don't put tons and tons of scent on, but I do put a little squirt on each side of the head and I smear it down to the tail of the plastic. And that's, um, I put it on every 30 or so casts, or if I, if I, you know, if it's been on there for a dozen or so casts and I catch a fish, I'll probably squirt a little bit more on there. You know, a few favourites for me, you can see by that tube there that's had the life squeezed out of it. That's sardine pilchard. I love mullet. I love inshore salt water, bloody tuna. There's a bunch of different scents in there. The main thing I try and do is I carry two different flavours with me. I'll try one, you know, if it's not working, I'll try a different one and often that'll switch it on. Some people like to mix two together as well. Main thing with scent is though, I believe it, you know, and that there, that's, that's the Procure. So it's got powerful amino acids, bite stimulants, UV enhancement, all the laboratory stuff, but it's also got real ground dead stuff in there. So for me, it, it, it masks the fuel on your hands, it masks the sunscreen on your hands and that sort of thing, as well as attracting fish and triggering strikes. So scent up, maximize your chances of catching fish. Next on my 10 things is downsizing. So. We've all got our favourite plastics and for me a three inch minnows is one of my favourite plastics. Very versatile plastic, catch a lot of different species on a three inch minnows. Sometimes fish just don't want it and that's, that happens with, with most plastics, you know. I'll fish a three inch minnows, sometimes the bait is really tiny and the fish go, no, nope, don't want to eat that too big. I'll downsize it to a three inch slim swims which is a thinner profile or I'll downsize it to a two and a half inch slim swims. And that downsizing of the plastic often turns on the bite and I'll catch the target species. For example, I love chasing flathead with three inch minnows. If they're not on three inch minnows, I'll go to a two and a half inch slim swims and often get the fish, but I'll even get the big fish. You know, a few of my biggest fish lately, I've got a 70, a 71 and an 80 centimeter flathead and they've all come on a two and a half inch slim swims. When I've started with the three inch minnows, then I've downsized to a two and a half inch slim swims. So regardless of your target species, downsizing can be effective. And also you'll often get a lot more bites to catch a lot more different species so if you're sitting there plugging away with a big plastic and you're like oh gee it's just not happening downsizing you may find you get your target species but you may also find you get a lot more bycatch as well which can which can make the day fun fill in the time all of a sudden you're catching you're not just catching flattered you're catching brim and you're catching other species as well there's another example so five inch centered jerk shads we all used to throw a lot of five inch centered jerk shads in the estuaries for mulloway snapper uh, larger predatory species Recently, with the addition of the four inch center jerk shads, I know the guys that normally throw the five on tuna and a lot of pelagic and reef species have been throwing the four and catching a bunch of fish. I've started throwing the four in my estuary system and I've got a 63 centimeter snapper, I've got a 60 plus centimeter GT and a bunch of other fish on that four inch. 
And again, it's just that matching of the hatch, getting that bait size down, downsizing. And I also find you catch a bunch of other species as well. So a lot more flat air and a lot of other species as well, throwing that four and center jerk shot. So just remember that you can downsize. That is an option for you when you are fishing plastics. And finally, once you've had a bit of a crack at plastics and you think you're going okay, this is my kayak kit here. So I've got a couple of different trays with a mixed bag of jig heads and a few, few pre-used plastics that have probably caught 30, 40 fish and they're still back in there because they still keep going. Um, these are snake locks jig heads. So I always carry some sort of weedless option with me uh, when I'm fishing. The weedless rigging allows you to you know, target structure that you just cannot target with a hard body lure. You cannot target it with a vibe. You cannot target it with a standard soft plastic because you'll be snagged or fouled in no time. But by rigging our weedless plastic, we can get that plastic into that structure and out of that structure with a minimal chance of snagging. If a fish eats it while it's in that structure, then it's over to you to get it out of there. So there we go. We're took us that, that quick amount of time and we're weedless rigged and we're ready to go and catch flat it in the weed, try for a jack, fish any, any in around structure for any of those structure dwelling species or just fish heavy weed for flat it as well, fish those weed beds with minimal chance of fouling up in the weed. So weedless rigging you'll find on our tacklecoms.com.au website there's loads of info on weedless rigging in the rigging guide section and there's a step by step on how to weedless rig if you haven't weedless rigged before. So. There you go, that is 10 quick tips from me to hopefully get you hooked up to your first fish on a plastic or maybe get stuck into a few more fish on plastics. Just get out there, give it a go, take a few of the favourites, you know you'll find lots of good info on tacklecoms.com.au, check out the rigging guide section, check out Soft Plastics 101, there's tons of videos there on fishing soft plastics right from the basics through to a bit more advanced stuff. Get out there, give it a crack. Choose a few of the favourites, read what the guys are fishing with. You know, if you go out there with a two and a half inch grubs and a three inch minnows, you're, you're pretty well on your way to catching a few fish. Mix up those jig head weights, mix up those retrieves, keep an eye out for what's going on around you. Sent up and fingers crossed you're getting stuck into a few and you're cracking a pattern. Cheers.